So transitioning to the West Coast, the team that actually had just beaten the Buccaneers last week, the LA Rams, they take they took on the Arizona Cardinals at SoFi Stadium on Sunday. Actually, I had some friends going to the game. It looked I was I was about to go to the game. It didn't end up happening. But this was this was an extremely impressive performance by the Cardinals. Let, let me just say this. In in our business, in, in media, and when we're hosting these different shows, we're all kind of prognosticators. And in this business, when, when you are a prognosticator, you're bound to make predictions here and there that aren't going to hit. It's impossible to shoot 100% every single time, every single guess and, and projection. And this is one of those times where I just have to be honest and admit that I was flat out wrong about the Arizona Cardinals. It's not that I didn't think that the the Cardinals were a good football team. I expected them to be a really good football team and perhaps make the postseason, have a chance at making the postseason, but I didn't expect them to be this good. I kind of questioned J.J. Watt's decision to join the Arizona Cardinals when it seemed like there were some better suitors out there. And you have to own it when you're wrong. And this Cardinals team has been extremely impressive. They're one of the only two remaining undefeated teams left in the NFL at 4-0. The only other undefeated team is the Las Vegas Raiders, who are taking on the Chargers tonight at SoFi Stadium. And this is a, this is a dangerous team. I mean, not only did you end the Rams' eight consecutive game winning streak over the Cardinals, which is what the Cardinals did. But you dominated them. 37 to 20. And really from start to finish, the Cardinals just played like a desperate team. They executed. They played physically. They schemed well. They had that urgency that is what we saw from the Rams against the Buccaneers when when the Buccaneers and the Rams played last week at SoFi, but it was the Rams that possessed all that urgency, all that fervor and that fire. And this Arizona team is dangerous. Offensively, they got so many weapons. Kyler Murray, I've said this before, continues just to grow and grow as a quarterback. I love Kyler Murray. He he is special. DeAndre Hopkins is obviously a monster. A.J. Green is finally in a winning environment, so he's able to showcase his kind of dyna- dynastic abilities and how dynamic he can be. And now all of a sudden you got a guy in Chase Edmonds who can run for 120 yards. Well, if this Cardinals team has a consistent run game like that, well, now your offense is is nearly unstoppable. And the thing about the Cardinals is when we really think about them, especially with Kyler Murray, is last year, last year this was a team that started off 5-2 and with a healthy Kyler Murray. And then they finished the season faltering a bit and spiraling three and six, but partly that was due to the fact that Murray was hampered by a shoulder injury. And so he really wasn't that healthy, really wasn't able to play at his optimal level, but he's healthy again. The offensive line has played well. The defense with J.J. Watt, obviously, and I've been extremely impressed with Isaiah Simmons, the linebacker out of Clemson, who was already showing some great promise through his first two seasons in the league, but he's just, he's big. He's just an athlete an all around playmaker that does everything for this team. The secondary is good. Buda Baker and Byron Murphy Jr. Those two have been playing extremely well, especially to start this season. So the defense is there. The offensive there is there the run game, the quarterback. There aren't many holes right now. They've kind of shored up almost every single area of need or any kind of deficiency from last year. Offensive line is going to be kind of the biggest question mark for them along with the run game. If those two things can kind of stay consistent, well, this team can go really far. And the play of the game came defensively on that fourth and one at the goal, a fourth and goal at the one yard line for the Rams. They're trailing by three touchdowns, 34 to 13. And, You got Matthew Stafford. You got this offense rolling a little bit, marching all the way down the field. And the Cardinals defense stood him up. 
And I'm not saying that the Rams were going to win this game. Had they been able to score, the Cardinals were still primed and positioned to win this game. But I do think that the Rams might have been able to generate some more momentum where you got 12 minutes left in the game. You're only down by two touchdowns with this defense at home. It's not inconceivable to think that they can get two three and outs and tie this game up. Now, why Sean McVay opted to throw it to try and hit Tyler Higby for all of all people on a fourth and one call or fourth and goal at the one is is beneath me. I, I don't really know why he decided to go with that game plan, but it is what it is. So the Cardinals deserve a lot of credit. They played extremely well. Now, again, I'm not overly concerned about the Rams. You certainly have to give credit to the Cardinals for the way that they played and the fact that they kind of out-schemed and out-executed the Rams in this contest. There's no question about it. But I think partly for the Rams, it might have been a little bit of an emotional letdown given the emotional high that they just experienced winning against the Bucks last week. That was kind of their biggest game of the season. The, the biggest game played in LA in quite some time, especially at SoFi Stadium with all the stars and celebrities out. So I think it's kind of natural that they may have had a little bit of an emotional letdown, not to take anything away from the Cardinals who just flat out beat them. But I do think that it's certainly possible that the Rams just came out a little bit flat. And they had to kind of start out the year with all this buzz. And it kind of culminated with this win in triumphant fashion over the defending Super Bowl champ Bucks. And they came back home against the Cardinals and just weren't quite ready. They didn't quite have the same juice and energy that they ought to have had. It's as simple as that. So I, I don't think that yesterday kind of truly reflects the gap between these two teams. I think it's a lot more competitive than that. I think the majority of the time, the Rams are probably the better football team, but not yesterday. Cardinals were way better. And for all those people questioning questioning the Cardinals and, and their schedule or have some skepticism or reservations about their 4-0 mark, that's kind of a moot point. It's kind of a moot argument because they opened up the season beating a playoff caliber team in the Tennessee Titans. Sure. They should have lost to the Minnesota Vikings, but it's the NFL. There's talent littered across the NFL. On any on any given Sunday, a team can lose in the NFL. doesn't matter what your records are. Every team's got talent, and the Vikings have a lot of talent. So the Cardinals were kind of gifted one. They were fortunate that the Vikings missed an easy chip shot field goal. That happens in the NFL. It's about finding ways to win. The Jaguars game. They still won by double digits and then impressive win over the Rams. So, yes, they didn't always look great. Hasn't always been pr pretty. But not every win is going to be impressive. Yesterday's was for the Arizona Cardinals.